The first casualty of war is the truth. And if the American people knew the truth about U.S. interference in Ukraine, they might not be so eager to start World War III. During World War II, Western Ukraine sided with the Nazis. After the war, the CIA helped Ukrainian Nazis evade the Nuremberg trials and began operating with them within the Ukraine. After decades of CIA infiltration, the Ukrainian People's Movement emerged in 1989 and gave birth to extremist groups Svoboda, Trident, and Right Sector. Neo-Nazi groups pushing for the ethnic cleansing of Ukraine. Extremist groups cultivated by the CIA, supported by the U.S. State Department, and used by the IMF to bring Ukraine to heal. When Yinyakovic beat NATO-backed Yushchenko in the 2010 elections, his government was being pressured into signing an EU association agreement by the International Monetary Fund in their typical conquer by debt offer that would financially ruin the Ukraine and place them at the mercy of the World Bank. Yanukovych declined their offer. And in today's corrupt world, you're not allowed to say no to the IMF. Funded by Western NGOs associated with George Soros and the CIA, a highly organized color revolution was immediately deployed against Yanukovych. Leaked phone calls reveal that the U.S. State Department was orchestrating this coup d'etat from within the U.S. Embassy with support from Vice President Joe Biden. Sullivan's come back to me, uh, VFR, saying, you need Biden, and I said, probably tomorrow for an attaboy and to get the deets to stick. So okay. Biden's willing. So you had this remarkable phone call where you have these two senior officials of the U.S. government apparently talking about a coup or how they were planning to restructure the government of Ukraine. Fuck the EU. No, exactly. Supporting a criminal war against Russia does not make you a patriot. It makes you a useful idiot of the globalist banking cartel. The very same entities waging war on all of humanity with vaccine passports and experimental jabs. The world's biggest investment fund says the war in Ukraine has put an end to globalization as we know it. Larry Fink is the chief executive of BlackRock. Countries and businesses are cutting ties with Russia. They're also imposing sanctions against the country, including cutting off its central bank from its foreign reserves. Fink predicts that with Russia's decoupling from the world, governments and companies will reevaluate their supply chains and even consider, reconsider their dependency on other nations. See, the truth is slowly going to come out about what's really going on. And what's really going on is this. The Ukraine has been the center of, uh, of the globalists, for decades and decades and decades, 70 years at least. CIA, which is not a good organization, they're, they're the, the implementers of deep state, let's say. They've been working this in the Ukraine for 70 years, building up a resistance to everybody and everything. Why? Because they needed to bring the Soviet Union down, but they also want the resources that are in the Ukraine. That's what this is all about, particularly eastern Ukraine, massive natural resources that CIA goes in, gets control of, and American business interests, and they're not business, they're just robber barons. They're not legitimate businessmen. They just want to steal, and that's what goes on. And so they're taking that away from from, the, from Russia and the Ukraine. And on top of that, it's the center of the deep state. And so by Vlad Putin going in, he's cutting the head off the snake. Once the head comes off, the whole beast will die. So that's what's actually going on, folks. So please, they are going to tell you their stories about um, possible nuclear war, and Vlad's the bad man. This is the war with Russia that they wanted with Hillary Clinton as president because she lost... The whole war against Russia was postponed. This is the plan they always had. This has been in the works going back to at least 2015, 2016. It was somewhat set back by the election of Donald Trump in the United States because Trump was not a globalist, but he was opposed to many of these schemes. What we're seeing now is a merger of the Great Reset, the Green New Deal, the policies on, on covid and a number of other aspects of, of government policy, which is being directed not on behalf of sovereign governments, but against sovereign governments. And this is why we're seeing the situation in Ukraine. And what is Russia's crime? Putin has asked for 20 years for security guarantees for Russia. And these guarantees include no further eastward expansion of NATO, which was promised to Gorbachev in 1990 which was promised again to Yeltsin in 1994. 
and yet NATO keeps moving to the very borders of Russia. Now they're talking about, as Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, did at the Munich Security Conference, that Ukraine has a right to develop nuclear weapons. And for Putin, Russia's security is directly threatened by two aspects of the Ukraine situation. The corruption, which includes prominent Nazis in positions of the defense and security forces of Ukraine. The European Union actually acknowledged in 2018 that the defense and security forces of Ukraine were heavily infiltrated by neo-Nazis, marching behind the banners of the Ukrainian SS, which joined Hitler in the 1940s. And when Putin said you need a denazification of Ukraine, he was called crazy. But the idea of a government, a corrupt government, being used not to defend the Ukrainian people's freedom and sovereignty. And I hate to see what's being done to the people of Ukraine right now in this war. But they are the cannon fodder mm -hmm. for a NATO and U.S. and British drive to bring down Russia and China. Why? Because they're the two leading powers in the world that oppose giving up sovereignty to this Green New Deal and the Great Reset. I, I don't have too many remedies. The, the remedies have to be discussed through dialogue by the stakeholders of our global system. But um, I just see the need for such a dialogue and I see the need for action. I see the need for a Great Reset. To what extent would a reset be brought about by a change in the White House, the election of Joe Biden, for instance? I don't know. Um, we first, we shouldn't speculate about the outcome of the election. We will see uh, beginning of November, and then we we can, in any case, uh, we can, and the World Economic Forum uh, is a very open and as an open platform to integrate everybody who is willing to address those issues in a spirit which means uh, to exercise here uh, true global citizenship.